Well, good afternoon. Um, my name is Patrick McMullen. I'm president of the Phoenix Mountain Preservation Council, current president. And uh, it is my honor to be here with Maxine. Thank you. And um, introduce yourself, and we'll go from there. I'm Maxine Lakin. I'm past president of PMPC at one time, and also past uh, president of the Phoenix Park Recreation and Library Board. So I've been around a long time. Well, if you would, to start this out, um, would you uh, tell us a little bit about your personal history here in Phoenix? I moved here um, many, many years ago, 1936, the first time with my parents. My father was transferred here, and so I lived in Phoenix uh, for a year, and then I moved away with my parents, and then we moved back, and uh, I graduated from Phoenix Union High School and went to University of Arizona and uh, married a uh, student from the University of Arizona who lived in Phoenix. And after being married in 1946, I haven't left Arizona except for traveling. And I love Arizona. Ah, yes. So you like the desert? I like every place I go. I like the desert, I like the ocean, I like the forest. I just like living. Yes, yes, I like being on the earth. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Well, um, I know you were friends with uh, Dottie Gilbert, who is credited with having started the push for the preserves and PMPC. What influenced you into wanting to help her create these preserves? Dottie Gilbert was a wonderful, gracious woman. And um, she lived kind of in the neighborhood, and I knew about her with her. PTA and with her writing for the um, Phoenix Gazette and um, we were involved a little bit when I was elected to the high school board and then um, while I was on the board we were trying to save Camelback Mountain and so many of the students contributed monies to try and and save Camelback Mountain, and so this is how I first met Dottie. And so after uh, serving five years on the high school board, um, I went on the parks board because Dottie said, you should go on the parks board. And I got to doing what Dottie said, because she was always right. <laughs> <laughs> I know I women guess. like that, yes. <laughs> so that's when I'm on the uh, Phoenix uh, Parks and Rec Board uh, for five years and then got involved with Phoenix Mountain Preservation Council, which was a continuation of trying to, to preserve what we have and add more land that would be available for the co whole community instead of just single people with their homes. So did you meet uh, Barry Goldwater back then? Yes. Um, Gary Goldwater, of course, as you know, was from Phoenix and um, was the same age as my husband's sisters. And so they were all friends. And um, my father-in-law, of course, knew the Goldwaters and um, were politically uh, friends. And... Uh, so I just thought that he was very outstanding, a man that really didn't want to go into politics, um, just kind of got pushed in, and uh, I admired him for giving his life to the Senate, but um, not really wanting to do that. But he did, was a good senator, and um, we wrote letters, and he certainly was a great supporter of the preserve and Camelback Mountain. And it was through Margaret Kober, who was on the city council at the time, that he worked with Margaret um, because he was in Washington, D.C., and he worked with Margaret trying to save Camelback Mountain. And I was on the school board, and so we all kind of tried to do the same thing. Oh, that's great. 
So um, how did Phoenix Mountain Preservation Council form? Uh, why was it important to create the Preservation Council back then? I think that, this is just my opinion, um, that when you live in an area, you love it and you take it for granted. And it's hard to believe that somebody will build big homes or resorts on land that is available. And so it takes people from out of state to really appreciate what we have. And then they become fascinated with the, the desert and the preserve. And Dottie was a bride from um, the East. Ruth Hamilton came from California. Penny came from Michigan. So we had a lot of people coming to Phoenix who appreciated what we have. And they got interested in the preserve and wanted it kept. And so I kind of give them credit for that. Um, they talked to the mayor of Phoenix at the time, and he uh, had a group together that called the Van Cleve Report. And that report was concerning the preserves. And from there, it went to PMPC to continue the Van Cleve Report, which has not been done, sadly. Oh. Well, I'll have to look that up. I haven't heard that. Of all the stuff that I've been given to do. <laughs> well, how did, this one, one that always uh, interested me, but how did horseback riding fall, in, fall into the goals of PMPC? Well, actually... Because Phoenix has changed a lot. Well, it has, and people had horses, and they always thought that they were so wealthy if you had a horse, but living in the West, it wasn't easy to get around way back then. In fact, when I came here, I thought everybody was riding horses, but of course they weren't. But um, trails are for all users, and hikers like to tra uh, hike, and people riding horseback like to ride horses on the trails. And so there were a lot of horse people on trails and maintaining the trails. And um, then slowly the city got bigger and bigger. And so there are still horses and they need to be protected from some of the things that happen on trails. But um, Dottie, I think, first had a uh, trail ride into the preserve for the city officials to show them how wonderful it was and quiet in the preserve. And I wow. think horses were the beginning of people learning about what we had. Oh, okay, okay. Because <clears throat> that's one of the um, things that attracts me to the preserves here in town, is just being able to go over and see nature the way that it is in the desert right. and hear that quiet, hear that peace in well, the preserve. We had horses in our backyard, and our girls used to ride to Chris Town before Chris was a town. <laughs> Chris was still irrigating over there when, and I, it's hard for me to remember that that happened, but it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we drove by there on the way over here. <laughs> I got Walmart and everything else. Well, nothing was there, but Chris irrigating, that was, he was a very interesting man from Norway. Oh. Um, and so, it, what else could you tell us? What was it like being president uh, when you were you were president of PMPC? I mean, we had all kinds of different things that. Well, you know, that, I couldn't be president you know. without the volunteers being on the board, so that was yeah, exactly um, very interesting. We met different places, sometimes out in, in, in Cano Park, sometimes in private homes. Um, we didn't have North Phoenix uh, Valley Visitor no, no. Center at that oh, time. Oh, the, the, yeah. At the Encano. North Mountain Park. Visitor Center. Yeah. And so forth. yeah, okay. But um, it just continued with people from all walks of life being interested in the preserve. And uh, I was very fortunate to be president, and I'm very proud of the president that we have now. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, great. And, and what would you like to add? I just really appreciate your stories. I just you know, <laughs> can't help but throw a joke in there, of course. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, as, as, we, uh, as we go forward, what do, you, what do you think? I hope that the people that are coming in to our community appreciate the open space and with the housing situation the way it is, we have to have open space. People have to be able to get out into the, to the, the quiet peacefulness of the preserve. And I hope that they appreciate it and they'll continue to protect it. It's very easy to let it go. So hopefully the next generation will preserve our preserve. And I think that's one of the keys right there as we move forward. Got to hand the gauntlet over as we go forward. Yes. Oh. And the grandchildren. <laughs> and the great-grandchildren. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Well, it's just, it's just been wonderful to sit down with you and, and Thank kind you. of get a, Thank a, you very a background much. for the things that have, have occurred here because your, your energy, your presence is just wonderful. Well, you see something that has to be done, and it's hard not to try and do what you think is right. Yeah, do something about it. Because you know, yeah. they always describe it in, you know, Phoenix, describing this area, that Phoenix area is so unique because of the mountain preserves. You yeah. know, we don't just have one over there you can go visit. We've got North Mountain, South Mountain, you know, geez, the you know, the Sonoran right? Preserve, you know, by Estowa Peak. You know, we've got the parks, we've got the preserves, but the preserves are the strongest in terms yes, of protecting them. No basketball courts and the No, there's soccer fields. Or yeah, this is the way that it is originally. Right. Yeah. And more people that realize how difficult it was to keep the preserve, the more support we'll have from the community. That's right. Yes, that's it. That's it. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. I just really, You're really welcome. wanted to, uh, and really appreciative of your story. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. This is Patrick and Maxine. See you again sometime soon in the preserve. Bye-bye. <laughs>